Well, I want to make sure that I'm documenting the good times and the bad, and I guess everything in between. I'm just sitting here with my head in my hands, staring at my computer screen, just like, just, I'm just freaking overwhelmed, man. I'm just, <laughs> everything feels like a priority. It's not that I'm trying to not take people's advice, but I've been doing this long enough to know what everybody's gonna say. Like, oh, well, you need to carve out some time to really make sure that you have goals in place and then a strategy to execute those goals. And then you'll know exactly what you need to be doing. I mean, yeah, but the, the goal right now is to get the word out about content juice more to more people. I, and people can argue whether that's a goal or not, depending on how you define it. I mean, if it's not measurable, then how do you predict whether you did a good job or not? Like, I understand all of that. But, you know, because it's a content business, I want to be putting out as much content as possible. So that's like my big push. And so like I'm sitting here just with some time blocked to do some content writing. But then I, I don't know, like I'm I just started running Facebook ads. And you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to see any traction from that as the systems like learning and everything. But like I'm trying to optimize it for actual leads. So people that from an ad go to the content juice website, the CJ site, and then book a call with me. And that's considered a conversion, you know? So we're just trying to book, get sales calls booked. And because it's high ticket, people don't convert on that unless they really have come to know and trust and love your brand uh, and, and the people that operate the brand. So me being kind of the face of it right now. And so I'm like, all right, we need to put out a bunch of organic content, like just keep, keep the pipeline full of just content going out that speaks well to the ideal customer or target audience. But the fact is because of the nature of organic content, the social media algorithms and the time it takes to build trust, the organic content marketing approach, which is the one that I want to lean into the most, takes time to like you have to build up that brand equity and build up the kind of the the IP like all of this content based assets that are out there existing online to help you. So I'm just like trying to think through like the best way to fast track this. And, you know, you get into manual outreach where you're doing like cold email and DMs and all of that. But again, if you don't have content to show like the, the depth and the width of what your brand does, I mean, cause that's the thing that speaks for you having this the testimonials in the site and we've got some of that but i guess i just feel like we don't have enough for me to confidently go out and start like shaking hands with people online and trying to get calls booked that way i would really love to hand that effort off to somebody else and pay them like if there especially if there's a way to results based pay so commission for getting calls booked that would be fantastic i guess i just get concerned about the risk of if it's not me trying to set these appointments there's just so many slimy tactics i would say of just the people that are like, oh, I'll book a bunch of, I'll fill your calendar with appointments. Like, great, but I don't know, I don't know what tactics you're going to use to get that done. And even if I get people booked into my calendar, like I want to know that they're good leads and I guess beggars can't be choosers. And so I, I recognize that to a degree, but at the same time, I don't want to put a bad taste in people's mouths around the brand of content juice. I want it to be a positive experience. And so the best way for it to be a positive experience for people first coming into ex contact with the brand is through either an exchange with me because I can control the narrative of how I present myself and how that represents also the brand. But then like through content too, like all the organic content speaks for itself because obviously it's been approved to be published. So that's the other thing too. I'm just kind of like, I'm just freaking overwhelmed, man. Like we need more cash coming in. We've got about a two month runway, honestly, that's kind of like where we're at, at least in my eyes. And I'm not like a big, I'm not a big risk taker. Like I don't, I don't gamble. I don't, I, I, I don't make bets on things. Like I'll bet on myself, I guess. I mean, being a solopreneur, that's been what I've been doing. But past that, like I'm not going to just spend a ton of money on Facebook ads. Like I'll do it some, 
but it's like $400 a month. And even that stings right now. I don't really want to do that, but we got to spend money to make money in some sense. And I freaking sit here knowing that it's time to get some work done. And it's not always the case, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't happen much because that's not true. But there are plenty of times where I am sitting here like knowing, like having the to-do list, like knowing what I want to work on for the day in I've already kind of planned that. And so there's intention. There's some strategy behind what my calendar is. Then I second guess, like, is this really what my time should be spent on? And as I'm sitting here, just all in my feels, (laughs) just um, feeling sorry for myself for a guess or something, I don't know, just feeling stressed with the unknown of like how this is all going to play out. I'm just trying to do a better job of documenting this process and share this with you. And I think through doing this also, it bring some clarity for me. Like that's one tip I will say for anybody who feels lost and confused or just overwhelmed, like the plates are just stacking up in your life and you don't really know how to prioritize like what you should be working on, what you should be doing. At least for me, I do a lot of talking out loud. (laughs) I'll come back here in my home office and I'll just talk out loud. So yeah, I don't don't know what I'm going to do, but You know, at the same time, recording this, this is me making content. And now is this going to directly impact me bringing on new clients to Content Juice? Probably not. In fact, if people were thinking about working with Content Juice and saw this, they may, I don't know, they might not want to. They might be like, ooh, that, is that ship about to sink? Like, I don't want to sign up for something that's not going to last. Rest assured, everything's going to be totally fine. These are just the dips, those moments of despair, and they happen over and over and over again. And from the wise people that have made it past this section in their career and are doing really, really well, they're still struggling with feelings of desperation and just despair in general. So, but hey, at least we made some content and so we got a, got a clip out of this, but sometimes it's just really hard to know exactly what you should be working on. I'm putting 90 minutes on the clock. It's a cool little timer, just twist it to, you know, change the time. Whoops. And 90, 91 minutes and 20 seconds. That's what we're going to go with. Boom. So it's a nice little thing to have on the desk, doing some content writing for the next chunk of time. What I've found is when I'm feeling really stressed out, frustrated, just overwhelmed, whatever it is, something that really does help minimize those feelings almost to the point of just full of aberration is just creating something, making something. And so for any brand out there, really, the job of getting yourself out in front of more people is an ongoing thing. It's never, you've never gotten to the point where everybody in the world knows you, right? So, and even if they do, they, the people that like you, they want to keep seeing things from you. They want to see your creations. It's like actors and actresses with the movies and the shows that they're in, new episodes of thing, new movies coming out. Musicians, same thing with their with their art, which is their music. And for us brands, it's with the content that we put out. So, you know, writing out, mapping out what I'm going to be doing for the next little bit of time is good. So just working through some stuff and then obviously we can repurpose it as well. So adding in some bullet point notes for a video on tips about talking to the camera to get comfortable, get used to it, the non-technical side of things. So just adding to that, that's what we're working on. I think I've got a few points here and we can polish this up and then we'll just keep on writing. And one tip, if you struggle like figuring out like like making the content itself, not really what to write about, but when it's you know what you're writing about, but you don't know what to write, I start with just like bullet point lists, like helpful tips on something, experiences that I've had around topic X, Y, Z. Yeah, stories or quotes or things that you've heard other people say in that. Just start noting that down and just like you can arrange things later. So that's what I've got going on here. Right now we're doing a tips talking to the camera. I've got six points here and this will be great because it can be a long form YouTube video for the Content Juice channel, but then I'll be able to take chunks of it and use it as short form video, which definitely gets more reach right now than the long form stuff. So it just kind of helps bring people to the channel and that's good, that's good. So, and obviously the short form stuff you can use across more than just YouTube, whereas your long form videos don't work super well on tons of social media platforms. And even the ones that say they do take long form video and they prioritize that, I've been seeing that it's like not that good. The whole idea is if you make something that's long form, even if it's just several minutes long, 
doesn't have to be a long, like hour long podcast, but doing that just gives you more meat on the bone that you can chop down into short form content. And then you can take snippets out of that for text-based quotes and posts like that. Like we see a lot of people taking their tweets and then just basically uploading them as in a, a static image, but they upload it as like a movie file so that it ends up being, uh, you can use it as a reel and then add trending audio. That seems to be the tactic that's working right now. So that's what we're kind of going after. And so again, for me right now is just doing the long form writing, just kind of figuring out what we're gonna do. All right, all right, all right. We're about to record the next major video for the YouTube channel. I don't know, major video. I used to call them hero videos. It's like the main long form, like well-produced type videos. But yeah, I'm kind of just getting everything set up. I used to have the room a little bit more like push one button and it all happens, but I've been changing up the setup and trying new mics and camera stuff. So anyway, I'm just kind of testing. I've got OBS up on my computer monitor, which is just below the lens here where the camera's at. And so I'm just kind of testing. I've got a remote for this light that you've probably seen in other the camera shot so I can take that up and down. I have this set at 5200 Kelvin. Usually I run it at 5500 because that's supposed to be simulate natural daylight. But anyway, just looking at this shot, I'm gonna bring it back down to about, this is 10% intensity too. I was just kind of looking at it and I'm going off of, I've got the flip out screen on the camera too. This is Sony ZV-E 10 if you're curious, which I love, I love this camera. And I'm just looking at it and just kind of looking at the OBS screen because sometimes it's hard to, when you're looking at it on a different monitor, is it the right amount of brightness? Like down here in this area of what you're seeing right now, like is it kind of like looking a little grainy? Like I can, it almost seems like it kind of is grainy over here in this section, although super crisp here. Let's see, I'm at 30 frames per second, one over 60 shutter speed, F1.4, so the aperture is pretty set to like blur out the background. That's as low as this lens will go, which is a 16 millimeter lens for those that are curious. The Sigma 16 millimeter, it's great. And then what else? Oh, I've got the ISO at 320. That's what it looks like right now. So anyway, back to the key light, getting the temperature dialed in, see how I'm getting more orange. So this is 3200 and this is 5500 or here's 5600. It says right there, yeah. So this thing is awesome and it just charges into the back of the actual light itself. It's this brand, let me cover my face, Re Relano. So far, so good. Keep it wired or battery powered. But anyway, I just figured I'd show you, I guess this is some behind the scenes, you could call it. I'd, <laughs> I've got the camera like finally set where I want it and starting to kind of get everything. So just dialing in the shot and then I've got my notes on my computer to monitor down here. A little pro tip too, when I uncover my notes, the screen brightness actually watch as I move OBS away and then the Notion document, which is just a big white box of text. See how it changes? That's crazy. So that's just me basically sh revealing my notes or covering them up. So you have to be smart about when you're setting up these, setting up your camera shot if you're trying to get it like really clean and crisp. So the other thing I can do, I'm actually gonna, let's see, this is not a very good backlight is set at 100. So let's wa watch my face and see if it gets darker. That's the backlight down to zero, which is still fine because I can read my notes. But now looking at OBS on the screen, it looks really dark. So I just have to kind of be mindful of that. But overall, I think we're pretty much where we need to be. I let in a little bit of natural light. Again, I would pick up the camera and show you, but I don't want to mess it up. But if I bring the key light up, maybe I'll run it right about 25%. And I think I'm going to bring it to, we're going to go 5100. And I am not a video pro. I know enough to do this stuff. I kind of know what you can tinker with, but there's always room to grow, learn, improve. And I will say the biggest thing that just cranked up the quality of my videos is just having a nicer camera, honestly. And I know enough about audio. I've got a uh, microphone here. Pull that down. Can you see that? Whoops. Shoot. But it's kind of sensitive and I haven't like really fully figured out how to make it great. So, all right. looks like it's out of the frame. Point it at my face. But for the most part, using this new DJI mic, it's working pretty well. So, all right, we're gonna film this. This is tips talking to the camera. It's just kind of how I have it written. And there will be a video coming out. I don't know if it's out already. If so, watch that next. But uh, yeah, so all the notes I was taking the other day, which was actually last week, it was so that we could film this thing and we're trying new things. I've got like different 
camera shots that I want to do. And so just finding the balance, I preach on balance a lot because it's just so true in life just in general. But I'm trying to find the balance between something that's really interesting and engaging and high quality from just a video viewer standpoint, something that I'm proud to put out, but that also doesn't like turn into a whole day's worth of work and more. You know, because between preparing it, doing research, making sure that you're setting yourself up for success on that front and knowing what you're going to talk about, making sure you have your notes, figuring out your shots, are you going to do different scene changes, leaving notes for the editor. There's just, oh my gosh, there's so much. And so like on YouTube, there are people that are super just iPhone, boom, here we go upload and then there's the people that take as long as it takes to make a cinematic film quality movie theater-esque production some sort of yeah you know and so you have everything and i think that's what's kind of cool about youtube so i'm trying to find that middle ground because it's all about building this content juice brand and organic video content like this is number one what i want to do more of i love it it's got compounding returns in a lot of different ways. It can be evergreen in nature. It feeds the business. It helps build an audience for the person for my personal brand. It's just an overall win. So just trying to find the best ratio, the best balance of high quality, but high output, you know, the whole thing. But that's uh let's let's record this thing.